Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, everyone. This is another episode of the Coffee with Coaches podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Stafford, for those of you who want to find me around the internet. And I have with me David Farrow. I'm just going to say a little bit about David because he's going to say it a lot more, a lot better than I can. He's got a Wikipedia page. He's got websites. We'll get to that in just a minute. Dave is an entrepreneur, a memory coach, speed reader, a keynote speaker, and a bunch more. He's perhaps best known, or at least famous for winning the Guinness, Guinness World Record for most decks of playing cards memorized in a single sighting, twice, 96, 2007. Anyway, he is a fascinating individual. Dave Farrow, welcome to the podcast. Hey, thanks for having me. This is great. Let's start, let's start with your beginnings in coaching in particular. What prompted you to start a coaching business or to get into coaching in a very, a very intentional way? Well, I mean, to be honest, I never intended to be a coach. I, <laughs> I didn't exactly even like it. But there, there's a certain point where people need, if you really want to, to improve people's lives, if you really want to transfer knowledge, you, you have to have some sort of a one-on-one -on -one approach. And the, the benefit of that also goes beyond. So when I started in, in business, if you want to kind of go to the beginning, and I got in the Guinness Book of Records, I did that because I had developed a memory system that was unique. It still is. I invented five new memory techniques, stringing memory modes, a bunch of things that if people are interested in memory programs, they might not have even heard before, but it has sold over 100,000 copies worldwide. It's been tested in McGill University in a neuroscience study and a bunch of other cool stuff. They had a documentary on it and stuff. So, you know, I had something really unique and I wanted to get it out there. So I got a lot of publicity. And as you know, I've I've been on like, you know, two to 4,000 different media interviews. And when I coach people, the coaching either took the form of teaching them, you know, something to do with their memory, improving their memory, or it was somebody coming to me asking, how do I, how do I, you know, do a good interview? How do I, you know, speak on camera and things like that? And I focused mostly on products. You know, I sold a hundred thousand copies of a product. So, you know, why not double down on that sort of thing, you know? <laughs> But there was a certain point where I just wasn't reaching people. I wasn't getting to people because they had such immediate concerns. So one of the great things about coaching is, especially today, if you coach people, you can put it up on YouTube or something like that. And you can actually like turn it into a lesson. I know most of mine were put in, you know, behind a paywall, but we're starting to get into more, more of the live you know, sessions and such. But it's, uh, it's, it's a really powerful tool because you can never predict with a product. You can never make the perfect product because you can never reach every single person. And coaching is really important and also very frustrating if people don't do what you tell them to do. <laughs> I really like that. I like that the approach where you're really, you're not just addressing the, like the more internal or the more external attributes of, you know, what, what, what a person's trying to accomplish. Cause you have them at, I don't know, this is just me kind of like riffing off the cuff a little bit, but you have the, the memory system, which is such a clear Pra I don't want to say practical, but real practical, like tangible improvements. Like here's this system, do this, this is what you'll get. And that, for a lot of people, that's very appealing. But then there's also for the, the same people, that aspect of how do I then translate this improvement in my memory, in my internal life? How do I translate that out? How do I express that? How do I share that? How do I talk about that? And I like the fact that you approach both sides of that, because a lot of times you have people, very successful coaches who are only really focused on one side or the other. And I like how yeah. Okay, for lack of a better word, holistic it is. Well, we want to think of what we're actually trying to accomplish. In my case, I'm a firm believer in uh, autodidactic learning. I believe that self-directed learning is the future. Uh, and I said this back in the 90s, and it turned out to be more true than, than ever. You have people now, some of the top people who are programmers at Apple and, and Google and other places that are self-taught, that don't have degrees in this. In fact, Facebook and Google dropped their educational component as a prerequisite for applications because the self-directed, self-learning hackers, so to speak, were outperforming the university grads. So the world has really changed. And I believe that the best way to create change is to, is to share with people tools that they can use and empower them to solve the problem themselves. So I'm not the kind of coach that you know, wakes you up at four o'clock in the morning and pushes you towards your goals. And, and I, I actually have a, have a coach that helps me do that. You know, I, there, <laughs> there, is, there is a place for that. But I really see coaching as also, you know, it does a lot of things, but my coaching really, it, it transfers the knowledge it, it, and it also helps with really, really specific cases. I've had cases where there were kids with, with, you know, severe learning disabilities and challenges. And I mean, I, I had one girl who she has a very severe ADHD and 
they have they had her taking a type of medication that makes you lose all appetite and she was taking this during the week five days for school and then on the weekend she was force feeding herself just to try to get enough calories so that she wouldn't she wouldn't become like grossly underweight yeah. and and when she started telling me this she started crying you know and that's when i really realized that if 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 i could make an impact on this person's life it would make an impact for forever. So uh, she learned a particular focus technique that, that we work on in, in the program. And she said it, it changed her life because it's a tool that you can use, but it's not, it's not me waking her up at like six o'clock in the morning saying, oh, go do your focus exercises. That's not really how I roll. It's more the, the actual tools themselves are you know, transferred. If I give you something that works so well and it's so empowering that you won't help but, but use it, you know? Reminds me of that, that old saying, what is it? Uh, to give, a, give a person a fish they eat for one night, teach a person the fish they eat for the rest of their lives. Yeah, there, there's a modification of that. I'm, I'm, from, I'm from Northern Canada. So yeah, uh, yeah it, it's, uh, you know, give a person uh, a fish and they eat for a night, teach a person to fish, uh, actually teach a man to fish and he'll sit in the boat drinking beer all day, wasting his time. <laughs> I'm sorry, that tickled me probably more than it should have, but yes. <laughs> I have a couple of, a, couple of my, uh, a couple of my good friends are Canadians and they're some of my very favorite people. Uh, their dispositions are just delightful. They never fail to put a smile on my face. Not unlike you. <laughs> Appreciate that, yeah. Let's see. Let's talk about... Let's talk about now and what's going to happen maybe in the next year or so, specifically for your business. What do you have planned? What do you have cooking up for the next, like, say, 12 months, 18 months? Obviously, it's been quite a 12 to 18 months in the past, but a lot mm. of people are in, I don't know, optimistic states of mind, and things are beginning to happen and move forward again in a way that we've been waiting for for a while. So I'm, I'm curious what your, what your coaching practice is going to be doing in the next year or so. Yeah, so my, my business, I, I founded a marketing firm about eight years mm. ago called Faro Communications. <laughs> and it's growing quite well. I got 10 employees where we're growing really, really well, but there's always a place where I have to do coaching for people. So I've branched out and I've got a number of, uh, a number of different companies that are hiring me to come into coaching. And it looks like I'm going to do more of a, of a comeback with the memory business. I kind of, you know, just kind of had that running on autopilot. I did a lot of speaking gigs, did some coaching, that sort of thing. But now we have a brand new course at fairmemory.com that is, that is really, really fantastically designed. It's better than even my earlier course that uh, we sold you know, hundred thousand copies of it. And beyond that, actually, we have a book coming out in 2022 called Brain Hacker. And it's about my story of going from uh, ADHD to uh, dyslexic to Guinness Book of Records. But it, it, the way I do it is every few pages, because I'm writing for an ADD brain just like mine, <laughs> every few pages, there's a brain hack. There's like, hey, I encountered this problem. And it goes with the kind of Dan Harmon story circle. I had this problem. I was, I, was work, I was searching for a solution. And here's the solution. And I show them the brain hack. And then, you know, here's how it changed me and, and the repercussions. So t teaching by stories is really powerful, I think. And, and you can do that as a, as a coach and also as a writer. So we're going to have, this book is, is going to be huge. And I think we're going to reach a New York Times bestseller list. And, and I think we're definitely going to get on, you know, major media and it's going to be, it's going to be a big hit. No, no doubt. I mean, yeah. I've got all the, you know, everything in place, you know, I, I run a PR firm, so I, I, I got marketing covered, <laughs> but, but with coaching though, I, I am getting more coaching involved. I'm doing much more hands-on work. And with this book, I think I can reach a lot more people because there's stories of me working with people in there. And I think a lot of people think of a coach and, and the limitations of just that one-on-one -on -one experience, but I would really encourage coaches to also turn your coaching into products and make that a, a long-term term tool. You'll, you'll see this in my course. If you, if you get it uh, at Faro memory, the, a uh, lot of the lessons there, it's much easier to teach a lesson about how to, you know, memorize a thousand digits, a number, or how to, you know, memorize tons of people's names or languages or something. It's much easier to teach that in context of a situation, you know, and coaching is a great tool for that. I love it. I'm, I'm really excited about this book and I love that. It's, it's so, <clears throat> I mean, it's so simple when you lay it out there. It's like people learn through stories. It's it's yeah. simple. it's almost it's common knowledge, but it's so powerful and so underutilized. And I love the idea of uh, well, first of all, people are hungry for something like Brain Hacker. They're hungry to improve themselves, not just for the sake of self improvement, but to improve themselves and improve the lives of everyone around them, the world, really. And I think yeah. there's a lot of hunger for that. And so I think the book's coming. I mean, there's not a wrong time for a life changing yeah. book, but I think it's I think this is the right time. <laughs> And, well, I mean, COVID put lives on pause, you know, it didn't stop, it didn't start, you didn't have as many ups and downs. There were certainly people who benefited a lot. I have a digital agency, so we we grew quite a bit during COVID. And I felt bad for a lot of a lot of companies that that did not make it too, you know, and and, yeah. and 
So it's going to be a very tough recovery, but you can tell the, the human spirit is alive and well, and they are, you know, the entrepreneurial spirit, all that stuff. They are really eager to get back to work, to get back, you know, to, to their careers, to, to get their life off of pause. I think that that's a hook right there in a, in a pitch somewhere, you know, it's just, we've, we put our lives on pause for a better part of, you know, two years now. Yeah. And it's, it's, I love the fact that you're all about basically helping people get off that, get off that pause to date and help activate yeah. them. And, and I, I'm a big believer. I'm a big believer in not believing in systems. I mean, I, I, like, don't get me wrong. I'm not, you know, protesting the government today or anything like that, but I just mean like there's a tendency inside of us to always blame an external force when something's not working. Mm-hmm. And I'm not, he- I'm not going to say that that's even factually incorrect. It could be someone else's fault that yeah. you're, you know, like I, I talk about in the book, hi, hi, I had ADHD and they gave me exactly the wrong treatment and the wrong tools and, and things got worse. But ultimately your life is yours and the responsibility at some point becomes yours once you're an adult. And I think that's my main message is don't wait for society to fix your problems. Don't wait for all these other things because chances are they won't. I mean, don't put your faith in that. Might be nihilistic, if you will, but (laughs) take the bull by the horns, you know, jump up and and find your own solution. So one of the reasons why I like teaching how I came up with all these brain hacks is that when you know the process of how I searched for the brain hacks, then like I I learned how to to read lips because I have a a little hearing disability, you know? And that was just a little thing that solved something for me. And, and my argument is, you know, you might not have hearing problems. So reading lips might just be a fun parlor trick to you, which is cool. But it's the point that that was my problem. And this is how I found it. So maybe you can take the same approach to whatever your thing is, you know? Here's how I solved a problem, quote unquote. Let's yeah. talk about problem solving. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's what stories really do is, is it empowers you because, you know, instead of just giving you the facts, like there's all these organizations that will summarize a book for you. And that's fine. You know, you get the facts and everything, but then you only know how they solve that one problem or, or the solution to that one problem. They don't know. You don't know how they solve it, right? Mm-hmm. Reading the story tells you the how, and then you can say, well, I can take a few lessons from that and apply it to my how in a, in a field that's completely different. And that's, that's the power of stories, I think. I think so too. I, I, not very, I wasn't day. very eloquent there, but that, that no, is great. <laughs> <laughs> I could do this all day. This is fantastic. But pharaohcommunications.com, pharaoh memory? Uh, pharaoh memory. Pharaoh memory. Yeah. If, if, you, if you need PR services, if you're an author, pharaoh communications is great. We, we do, we do you know, free consultation. But pharaoh memory, actually, we have some great content up there that people can get absolutely free if they give their email. And of course, if you sign in for the online course, you can t- absolutely transform your life. We're talking being able to make a mind like a steel vault. You'll learn memory techniques that no one else has come up with because I've and trademark them. And you'll also find out a more, it kind of goes beyond memory. There's a whole series of focus techniques and how you can achieve flow state by doing a kind of interval training for your brain. And it's the thing that uh, college students, when I speak on the college circuit, have said has, has helped them more than anything. And I, I really want to give people all the tools to show them how to learn. When you learn how to learn, then the world's your oyster. You can literally jump into any field and, and master it. Uh, it it's, it's fantastic. Exciting. And the book is going to be Brain Hacker coming out in early 2022? Uh, mid, mid, mid around September, September okay. 2022. But, but there's going to be a special deal for everybody who is signs up for my course. You know, we're probably going to give them like an ebook or something like that, or, or you know, special discounts and stuff. And, and we're going to have a bunch of bonuses. So if anybody gets into the course now, then you're grandfathered in and you get all the bonuses later on. That's the way it gets done. I like it. I like it a lot. Dave, thank you so much <clears throat> for your time. Sorry. <clears throat> Got a little, let me get a little coffee with coaches here going down. Sure. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you to the audience for listening today. I hope you enjoyed your run, your bike ride, your, your drive, if you're going anywhere. And we'll talk to you all soon. Thank you very much.